Well, we thought we'd do something different, didn't we, today, we did. Dale? So you're in my back garden. Lovely. Nice in the sun. Fantastic garden, by the way. Yeah, well, that's my husband, I have to be honest. And no, the gardener who mows the lawn once a week. Excellent. Um, and Thank we you, thought we'd have a sort of review of the season and looking forward, making it a bit different from the usual sure. talking about the match tomorrow. So, and we Go thought on. we'd also try and be a bit honest. The fans knew what was going on and what yeah, happened at the beginning of the season. It's important. So my first question, you've talked a lot about your budget at the beginning of the season. You've always been very loyal. You haven't said what the board gave you as a budget right at the beginning of the season. Yep. Now, tell the fans exactly what you had to play <laughs> with when we said go out and get a team to keep us up. £200,000. And when we say £200,000, it did get put up later on. Yep. Um, yep. But roughly, most teams, what's their budgets? Talking yeah. generally. You know, you've got, you got to top it as I've got 2.2. As you know, I think you know, we're not going to mention any names, but um, you've got the ones who've got 2.2 and it goes to 1.6s and you've got even somebody who's below us on more than a million pound and it goes to 750s from the local people, I think. And um, so it was very tough, very mm. tough at the time. I realised why you've done it. I knew that you would want to protect the club. I knew the directors would want to protect the club. I knew that the club was more important to me. The club, you, you've always said that you would never put the club in jeopardy. Um, I was devastated, as you know, I was saying, listen, what do you want us to do? How can I do it? What can I do? Who can I sign? I had to meet players and say, listen, I can't do anything at the minute. And that's why the Musa things break down, Jamars and Hades and things like that. So I sort of knew why you'd done it, to be honest, but it was very tough at the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just on players, there's some funny stories that come out of it, to be honest, some funny... So uh, I thought when you give us that decision that I, I never really had a budget and you were protecting the club, I went up to Waterloo and I was up Waterloo and I'm meeting players and I'm sitting down with players saying, listen, I can't do anything at the minute. Just give it a couple of weeks and see what we can do and give it a couple of weeks because that's what you were telling me. Yeah. Just give it time. And they're saying, well, he's offered us this and he's offered us this and I can go over there and I can go over there. And another player, so I met them all one-on-one -on -one at Waterloo and I remember I talked to a couple of players and saying, listen, I can't do that. I'm not trying to, but I, I can't. Because where we missed out on a lot of things, what people don't realise, what you realise and the board realise, every other club could have got furloughed, but we couldn't furlough players because we're part-time. So uh, being part-time, we couldn't furlough players at the time because their contracts finished. Where the other clubs were like, still playing their players for the summer. That's why you got to make like, say, Craig Ross for staying with her mm. after getting double player a year and not even giving a pay rise. Anyway, like, for example, if I had to go to Rossi and say, listen, mate, you've got double player a year. I can't do anything here for you. I miss, uh, pro All the lads are meeting up there and everyone's like, looking at us thinking, are you taking a mick? I'm saying, listen, the club's got to come first. The chairman said, whatever happens, the club's going to be run. And whatever happens at the end of the season, we're going to have a football club. If you like to run it, really, you know, even though you wanted to stay. And I was glad I stayed. But um, we're all coming in and meeting and meeting them. And everybody's leaving. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh, God, that's six players. That's seven players. I'm telling all the people. Anyway, everybody's like, they're, they're saying to me, Douse, that's ridiculous, man. You know, you can't do £200,000. What are you going to get for that? And I said, I, do it. No, I haven't got a clue. I'll let you try to do something. So anyway, Cookie walks in. A lovely big smile on him. Everybody's got COVID. I've just recovered from COVID. So Cookie walks in. I said, Cookie, sit down. I says, I know, mate, you're on the same wage as you were when you're in the conference south. I says, I know I promised to put your money up. I'm just being honest with you. I can't. I understand, though. It's not a problem. The world's going nuts. He said, it's easy. I said, sign the paper now. It's the easiest <laughs> one. Well, it's the only one I got signed up. The hardest bit about that, as you know, was going to pre-season when usually in pre-season everybody's looking forward to a new adventure, a new, you know, um, a new start to be honest and going up there in the first training session where we looked to be on the grass was five people there you know the five lads plus a couple of trailers and plus a couple of academy lads that's when arguments started because you got a senior player saying dose it's three four weeks in now what are you doing about it and what uh, i remember going to hand with phil and getting beat three one off them and they the lads looking at me and i'm saying listen we're trying i knew i had to wait till i could maybe get a couple of free loans or do something so it's very, very tough time and I had arguments with senior players because they were getting frustrated saying, are you going to try to build a team here, Dose? Are you going to try to do this, Dose? So it was only before the week, before we end the season where you put up a hundred grand mm. that I could maybe get Slav off on Lewin and people like that and get a kid from um, shot and from. But it, it, it was start off, Avi, but you know, it's yeah. just not, you know, it was, uh, the, the hardest bit is obviously trying to get a team and like which is great for next season of course which we'll talk about in a minute but going there of course i was disheartened i understood your decision i understood what you were saying as, as a board because you would never let the club go down um, and i get that but at the time you know i, I thought okay we'll fight through it and at the time okay we'll try to keep you up and do anything else but i do understand what you had to do i mean well the biggest problem was we didn't actually know the season was going to no. begin and the minute we committed 
um, it was very difficult because under the furlough rules we couldn't put those players on furlough because they weren't on contract at the time because yeah. those rules of course kept changing and it was only the week before the season began when the league decided it would play because the government then yep. said that they would be putting some money in. So of course it was, it was one of those really difficult decisions. We had yep. made the decision not to put out season tickets because it, we felt that the chances fans getting into matches weren't going to be high. Um, and we had been guided by the league not to put season tickets out there. Yep. So it really was relying on the money we'd raised earlier in the year to build us through to at least give you something and as you said we then did increase it yeah. but very much as the season began, it began uh, well, I, you know I, so it was incredibly difficult i mean you mentioned there Dale, she had covid earlier yeah. um, when it all started and and there's been a lot of talk about the effect of covid and i know the effect it's had on some of the team members and i know yeah. we've had team members down well what's your view on it's how hard. the players have managed it. When I didn't know what it was, I was, I was, I was stupid. Um, I remember when the game got called off against Dagen, didn't I? Uh, Calvin's laughing here. So I, uh, I got and I said, I said, it's a disgrace. I want them three points back. We went down the pub. Remember, we yeah, went down yeah. the pub. Down the pub. Uh, so, uh, we down the pub. <laughs> so, so we did. And so I said, I want them three points. Anyway, I remember the following Monday, a Cookie, we, we trained for one week before Ozzy came a pandemic. Anyway, Cookie comes, poor old Cookie again, he says, um, Gaffer, can have a word? I went, yeah, he says, you know this famous thing? He says, one of the lads at work have got it. And I sit next to him. I says, you see nothing to know about it. But I couldn't know what it was, you know. Yeah. Two weeks later, obviously, you know, I collapsed in the house and got in the hospital and oxygen. And my daughter, I'm, we've seen us lying there. And it was horrible for them seeing that. Like. So that's when I knew, because every single day we tried to text us, and that, uh, pff, it was there. Uh, Mind -boggling. Like I'm not scared of now, as you know, I'll jump out of planes, I'll do the air thing. And me, in life you think, well, one day it's going to happen to you, if your number's up, it's up. But not able to breathe, as like breathing through a straw, it was frightening. But when I was at the hospital, it was frightening, because I talked to this bloke who was a bit of a football fan. So every four hours, you had to take an x-ray of your chest. And people are getting wheeled off who had died. And it, affect, it didn't affect, mentally did it affect us? Maybe, seeing these people, and I'm thinking, am I next? He says, I think you'll be all right. That's what he said to us. Two days later, I said, yeah, great, and go home, and five weeks later, I was okay. The worst thing I'd done was trying to be Superman by doing mm. them laps around the pitch, um, around the, the lake, which was yeah. daft, but I wanted to prove that I was better. It did do me kidney stones again, yeah, because it affected everything. So I had a bit of a, so I realised that when this thing comes for budget and things like that, yes, I did have players, as you know, who come to us and said, those who don't want to play, because the two bubbles, the bubble with the jobs, the bubble from somebody like, you know, coming from Torquay, the bubble from somebody coming from Birmingham, and it was like, you know, we're having 78 players train on night aim. That's why I try to do a couple of mornings and try to put with those professionalism where Nick was excellent doing the COVID stuff. And when he come along, that helped, it did. Mm. But I didn't, it, uh, my captain's not scared, I admit as well. Because I mean, we had more COVID cases, what people thought, to be honest, because you're not allowed to see it. But my captain, to be honest, like Josh, he come and seen us and said, you know, his dad, he doesn't mind us seeing us, his dad was very not very well if you like or had a condition that he didn't really want to really play because what if you give it back to his dad and all the rest of it so i do get that you know and um maybe one at the minute i've got to mention is musa de Hava. and i blame do i blame myself i knew for months he wasn't right even the semi-final he wasn't right he wasn't musa and i love musa and he, you know he wasn't and he's on the coach and he's texting all the time and all that now i'm getting angry and even the other night the ramadan thing i blamed it on i'm trying to make an excuse for the lad to be honest he's very honest here and he's, he's got that now, he knows when he can eat, he's fine with that now. But I had him in the office yesterday and blah, 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 but he's never seen his kids for a year. Yeah. He's never seen his family for a year because if he had to go back, he would have to stay back there, locked down. If he had to come here, he would stay here. He didn't want to let me down as a person. He thought he was letting the club down, he thought he was letting the fans down. So I'm, as you know, you give us permission, we're going, to, we're going to send him back home the next week. We are to see his family, say, come back refresh next year, come back seeing your family. You don't realise what effect it is, especially where, where you know, again, I'm not, uh, where other clubs, like all the shot or whatever, I've got them little bubble where that's their bubble. But when you've got a bubble there and a bubble there, and I got one call, who I'll not see because I was quite angry about it, off, a, off somebody who, you know, a works place, saying, you know, do you expect him to come in and train? I'm saying, yeah, I do. He's part of it. If it's, he's going to get the sack and all that, you know, so I had to not let that player train. Just typical, the bubbles mm. were in, you know, but um, I think it's had a horrendous effect on people. Mentally, like I think in football, I know I understand fans' frustrations. Look, watching on the screen, football, as we're trying to explain, hasn't been great for the club this year. But you know, it, 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 trying to motivate a team who are, are scared of COVID and uh, what happened at the start of the season, then the new medication come into it, then people realizing they can't be full time footballers next year and know that they probably can't be here. 
we just got to make sure we get through this season in a very exciting time ahead. Mm. And of course, I mean, then we've also had the fun and games that we got the government funding no. for three months and then it was going to be through Sport England. Now, we're, I'm happy to say we didn't get anything from Sport England because they congratulated the board on managing the budget so well we didn't need the money, mm. um, which is somewhat frustrating for us as well. Right. But we have managed to keep going and we're playing the season out. Yep. You're going to bring some of the, more of the academy lads in, I think, as yep. the season Get goes through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you don't want to expose them too much at this moment. You, because I know where, I know where we are. Like, you've done it right. You know, one thing where we've been penalised is by doing things right. You have a board have, um, listen, uh, you've you, you got to be commendable really where in football, if people look how we run a club, you should look at yourselves really. I'm, I'm not just saying that because I've got me too, I'm, I'm being honest because you could have went the other way and give a club 300 grand in debt for John to take over. You could have went and said, okay, Dels will give you 400 grand and that, you know, I want to stay up on that and then you would have got a few hundred grand in debts and all that. So yeah, when you were not going to get any money, this football club's losing a lot of money like everybody else, but where everybody else is sort of keeping it up there and having to grow up this dream, we've went and said, no, as long as we've got a football club at the end of it, and the dream will have to be next year. You mm. know, like, you know, if new investment coming in and things like that. I knew when, you know, John and yourself said, that was if you want 100 grand, there's 100 grand to back you as an extra. But if I spent 100 grand on getting a player who I don't really want, if I spent 100 grand on getting a cup, yes, it would have been all right for me CV. Yes, it would have been get when you have a top 10, but we're never going to get promotion. The 100 grand, which is, uh, is promised for next season, added on the budget, which is yeah. fantastic. And what you know, so yes, I, I've got to take a bit of a, oh yeah, why is he not saying players? Why is he just gamble on him? Why is he gamble on him? Because I knew that as long as, you know, and now we're, we're, you know, we're trying to look after the club's interest. So um, rather than me getting the club to 10 for 12 or whatever i thought no i'll not i'll just take any stick going i'll keep it because it's been promised for us next season and when next season comes it's a clean slate a blank piece of paper like i had when i first got the job and i can't ask anything more now i can't ask anything more of yourself saying to me those plan now for next season do it now it's fantastic i've met as you know five or six players um you know we're really confident about the whole thing and start fresh and you know that's what we want to do but obviously with young lads i've been in a position before what you don't want young lads to do who have done fantastic leo skinner sam evans who could start them all these lads coming in involved in a dead like you know getting beat every week you, you want them to say listen you go out there don't worry about results just go and play the game but you, you don't want them just being banished every single week so i'm trying to give them like 20 minutes here give them half a game there maybe he's one of skin i'll start the mother mm. maybe he's one will do whatever then you know you drag them out you put them back in at the end of the season i think when the fans open up if we got five or six lads playing that's the future of a club you know it's, it's scott and all that you know they've done great jobs pushing these lads through and um, we've won i think they'll be with a premiership club by the end of as player you know to push through from our first team fantastic for the kids Mm. Yeah. I, I would agree. I mean, yeah. I think um, watching them play, they're really growing into two playing, but I think yeah. doing it in the way you're doing it's right. Because if you overface them and they lose confidence, confidence. Yep. It's, it is key, isn't it, with youngsters not to overface them? Of course, and you, you've got to make sure that you know, there's no way I'm going to come, you know, maybe he's made a couple of mistakes. Like, um, was it uh, the, the Coombe game I lost? Was it not? Can't we put a young kid on? Makes mistake. But there's no way I'm going to say we're, we're going to get beat the next eight games because of the young kids coming through. That's awful for them. Let them grow. Let them come. Make problem getting results. But it's important that we come through. We want, as you know, I'm talking to some experienced players because that's what we need. But young lads have got to come with that. So if I'm talking to a couple of experienced players, as we know, we're talking to now for next season, you want the young kids coming through as well. It's important that the academy is not just there for the show. The academy is there to produce young players, yeah. which I have done with Charlie Carter and people like that going through the ranks and, you know, and stuff. We want, we want uh, Jaden Wevin going on to bigger, better things. Um, these kids coming in, like, like the Skinners and uh, the Sam Evans, who we've got a lot of hope for. for um, Leah coming on, and he didn't, he didn't when he come on the other day, I thought he was one of the better players. Yeah. I thought Jack Skinner yeah. was against the top of the table side. Fantastic for him, you know. Mm -hmm. But you just don't want to over push and ever lose complete confidence in football. So uh, it's a bit of a juggling act a little yeah. bit, you know. I mean, you've already started to talk about, the, you know, you've now got the ability to plan, yep. which is something that we haven't really had in the club for some time. Yep. You've got certainty and you're already looking at the team for next season. Now, we're not going to talk about names, obviously. No. And you've touched on the fact you've already spoken to some people. Never. I think you've had some handshakes from some yep. people and you've talked about looking at experienced people. Yep. So how's that actually going for next season? Uh, at the minute it's gone very well and it's great because with five weeks to go in the situation we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes, it's great to plan. I've never able to plan and that includes when I was at Hampton and Richmond, I could never plan um, that far ahead. Now, 
I've got five weeks to plan. Um, I've got all pre-season to plan. You know, you don't want to gamble and say, I'm going to take them for the sake, get the right players in. Some of these players we've been after for two years and only sort of thought, I'll not get him, but now I can. You know, and I, I, I met a player, um, you know, who I'm allowed to because the manager said I'm allowed to, who's in, in the football league at the minute. You know, we sort of shook hands. We, I'm good enough on a handshake, I hope he is as well. So when this season finishes in the Football League or the season finishes in the conference, a couple of players have already done handshakes on, we can announce them straight away. So um, the bottom line is, well, that's what we're going to do. It's Nothing changes, you know, like it's um, the, the hurt and the frustrations where we are, nothing changes. I, you know, I, I still want to do a wing walk, I still want to you know, help uh, the charities out. We had two young kids on the pitch yesterday trying to make their day a bit special. Um, you know, I went round to bars with season tickets because, you know, if anybody wants to get a season ticket, come see me in the office and we'll have a chat like we're doing now with you. Come see us. I'll sell them myself. So I want them to live the dream like we do. So Boz has took 10 offers. I went to see Annie Leight with like, yesterday morning with jo John, um, who does the stand as well, beat the C&M. So listen, take five season tickets and can you give them to your employers? But if anybody out there wants to have a chat about football, come see me. I'm at the ground 24-7 or come and get food and all that, you know, and, um, and I'll, I'll give you a season ticket and I'll, ex I'll explain why you should buy one because I think in the next couple of years, I wouldn't see it otherwise. I think it's a very exciting time for the mm. club. Mm. I understand fans' frustrations because they're sitting there watching all this go on. I hopefully this chat will explain exactly the honest truth what's going on where, you know, I'm not saying two in the ground, but you, you couldn't compete in the Raymond Premier with that. But I knew where I was going to be. I knew we had done well at the football club. I said to Ian on the first before the season started, listen, because he was saying, oh, they'll, they'll still love your dose, what you're doing. I said, listen, you lose football matches, people go against you. But I've got a willing to take that for the next five weeks and take stick. And even if people don't know what's going on, our Dowson's took the club as far as they can. I'm thinking, you know, before this thing, the record was as good as anybody's in non-league football. But a great thing about them, the fans and judges in the next two years, how I can progress a club with a budget. And that's what I'll be judged on. And I think it's also tr important to remember that the players we've got now have achieved a lot for this club. The core of those players have Massive. achieved a great deal for our club. We have, and you know, they, they, they've got the money in the bank, didn't they, for the cup run, which helped the last season. They've got promotion at first asking. Majority of the lads steered. The, the only thing what you sometimes look at now, I'm mean, they never name drop because they've done great for us. I would never slag one of our players off, ever. And I would help them get clubs if we need be at the end of the season. I always would. But maybe it's the 12, 13 games last season when we're sort of coming down to ninth. I probably could have learned a lot more about them then. At the start of the season, you know, the Ben Gavins of the world, for example, Josh Casey, Rossi, Max Krasma of the world, when everybody was like shooting off, shooting off, Cookie's got to come into that as well. They said, OK, we believe you, we'll, we'll stick with you. You know, it's great. I, you know, I wouldn't have it, Casey was already under contract, but he would have done it. But something like Rossi, I remember being in the back of Dave Curtis's garden because he was doing some work because he was on furlough way of trying to find them jobs. So Dave mm. got him a job. And I sit there like I am now, and I said, listen, mate, I know I promised that I can probably get you a bit more. I know I could have done this, but I can't. I'm being honest with you. He said, no, I just want to play for you. And that's why I'm delighted Rossi's the first one we've planned for next season, because it is his club. He showed a lot of loyalty in that summer, yeah. whereas a lot of clubs yeah. come after him, as you know. And he stuck with us on the same money. And Cookie took a drop, and you know everybody else had to take drops. And Ben Gavin's got to come into that as well, come from Torquay. So, um, you know, it, there's a few players in all. You know, I, was saying, I would never say, oh, we're going to get rid of them. Because the six, six, where we haven't been beaten much in the last couple of years, bar this season, it'd be hard for me to manage that player again and hard yeah. for that player to be with me again because mm. all what's happened, all the three players training, blinking COVID, you know, down here losing games, um, not knowing what's going to happen in the football league, it's been a hard try to say, listen, it's like, I would go in the change room, if you don't play, you're sacked and all that power's left me this season. Mm. So uh, I'm looking forward to being a manager again because mm. you had to manage a football club. I feel so I've had to manage COVID and the financial situation more than I've had to do with the team. Mm. Next mm. season, I can go with the team fully. Mm. But with these lads looking them in the eye saying, I know what's been like for you this season. I know how much it's hurt your families, like Musa, for example. That's why we had to get Musa away at the France and I hope supporters understand to see his kids, to see his dad, to see his sister who he hasn't seen for a year, just so he comes back. Yeah. Because if not, I don't think I could manage him again. And he's a lovely guy, a lovely lad, who's got a big future at this club. And I think it's important that uh, some of those players you've mentioned, we've had an enormous amount of injuries. So I'm sure that's partly because it's two matches every week. Every week. They're working as well, most of them, as well as playing football. But yeah. they've actually come and played with injuries. With injuries, uh, the semi-final was a bit like that, to be honest, where, you know, we had Sam Ashford, who probably who shouldn't have played for his calf. But I said, listen, if you just, we're, we're agreed, if he just stands out there and maybe he's going have a moment of magic, didn't last that long, like, you know, on the other, uh, we had um, Jamal Lurza, who said, I want to really give it a go. And obviously he needs a little operation on his groin. But um, we didn't know what it was then, so it just got worse during that game. You got Matt Jarvis, who was on the bench, who couldn't have come on. 
and you got Napa who come on and done his hamstring, which we knew about. So you're going to them games, and they didn't. Like, I know I'm one of them. You've got to kick, get on with it. But if it's an injury, I've never made a player play. You know, I do. I say, can you play? Is it a kick? Yeah. Can you or not? Have a fitness test. And once a fitness test are done, you see it go on and. And then, um, but yeah, the injuries like obviously you can go over who a lot come with, even mm. from, from Johnny Goddard, who I feel for Johnny because this is going to be his way back and it was going to give him a chance. But he's done his ankle, when he's done it again, he's not in a very good place at all. Like, you know, he's missed a lot of games, Johnny. You might, you might try to train in the next couple of weeks, but you know, it's a lot of games to miss. Mm. Top here was because he's not going to be full time football. I thought it was best to cut ties now and you know, and um, and move forward. And that's all I've tried to do there with him because he's got his job and everything else. I know he said he's on the other end of the phone, but I thought we'd move forward because he's give good service. Our club tops, good service he has. But if he can't make the morning training and he can't be here next season, at this point, I thought it was best to move again. I could have dragged him in and said, oh yeah, play and he might have nicked a few goals. That would have only benefited me being high up the table. I thought I'd go a different way and try to have a look at like, take a couple of gambles for next year. And some of these gambles haven't come off, of course. Um, I would say I must have to tell you the truth, that's why I can't gamble next year. The rest of the injuries are taking care of itself, you know, um, from Casey to Max Krasma, who had a boot on the other day and all the rest of it. And, um, you know, the other two we had in the other night, Ben Dempsey's going to be out for the season, hamstring, blocky now, hamstring and all that, you know, I think we've got 11 on the board at the minute. Yeah. Um, you know, but we'll let it get on with it, you know what I mean? Ashford, will he be fit shortly? I believe he is. Um, Sack, we believe he could be fit shortly as well. So, you know, it's a couple who can come it. And, uh, and it's good thing is, Wimpton's been fantastic with him, um, giving us sack free of charge. Sa um, Crawley have given us Sam free of charge. So, it has helped with like that, you know, so these gambles can come through. Yeah, well, I think that's right. I mean, so the final bit, we've, yeah. we've talked about, you know, where we started at the beginning of the season, how the board gave you the bad news. Of course, the board itself has changed through this yep. season with John coming in as the majority shareholder. Um, although, of course, he can't get here from America, right. Right. which is, uh, makes it quite difficult. But, you know, the general the impact of John, the, the change in the board, how yeah. do you feel that's, that sort of helped the club? Not just on the football front, but just generally looking forward. Well, it's brilliant because, like you see, it's the first time, you know, um, where Kel will come to the office and talk about it and you, you'll come in. But it's the first time somebody's like actually come in and said, let's talk with football. Because beforehand it was a ground one when we get put. I know I know what happens and things get turned down, but I had to have a, a season about the ground and you know and I'm thinking, don't I put the ground in the FA Cup here, yeah, Watford and all oh yeah, well the ground next year and, and all that, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like you know, at the start of the season the board made that right decision, which is end up now saying, let's keep the club going at the end of the season, which is the right thing to do. Um, but it's the first time you look forward and you're thinking, I tell you what, I want to do it to you. The board actually want to talk about football. He's telling me, John, he's going to be there morning, noon and night. And I think that's what might work. I work with that every day. We'll both be there morning, noon and night. They want to have an ambition to go up the ladder. They want to have an ambition to go to the Football League and things like that to do. We reckon we can go up, you know, we we'll have a crack at the top 10 next season and beyond the season. It's fantastic news for a club. Fantastic news. So I think everybody at work can realise that the last few years has been a bit of a year a year. We'll go up, we might do work here, we might have a cup run, we'll go down again, we'll go up again, you get somebody like me and gun there. But it's the first time I'm delighted that the board of backers and said, OK, let's take it forward for the next couple of years. I'm dying to do it. I've been dying to manage a club. I've been dying to work with a budget before and be judged on the budget. So I've got no excuses whatsoever in the next couple of years if I don't improve a club. Mm. And I think the board want to do the same. Yeah, and I mean, we all know it's going to take time. It's not going to happen immediately. We also know, I'm sure there'll be the odd mistake along the line. Yeah. But I mean, I think the aim is, one, we want to try and be transparent as much as we can be with fans, yeah. which is part of the conversation today. Yeah. We also want to involve the fans as much as we can. Uh, we won't talk about the badge debate, but I think we can talk about the shirt debate. That one was a lot easier. And, and of course, we want to bring the club back to being part of the community, to being important in Woking, right. to being something that's achieved. I'm more in a football club. That's what I've always wanted to be. That's what I've missed more and everything. I can talk about what we've talked about this morning, but how I try to manage, as you know, I try to go and see the fans and go out, uh, and walk up the town centre just to go and say hello to people. And when you can't do that, it, it, you do lose that thing. I think the, our best performance of the season was when the fans were there against yeah. Hartlepool. Yeah. And it was great seeing them and great seeing everybody there. When you haven't got that thing, it's got, and I am a, a community guy, I think. And, well, the club is, the club's a community club. But we, we, we want to attract the fans, we want them to come down. That's what I'm saying, come down to see me about your season tickets and have a cup of coffee. And if I've got to have 40 cups of coffee in a day, that's what I'll do. Yeah. 
Hopefully it's better than the one you've made this morning, to be fair. And, um, but anyway, it's, um, you know, but I'll, I'll do that. I will. I'll meet people. The other day, it was lovely. Boz's team, you know, Boz, great guy. Um, I, I coached his girls' team on Monday night. It was great seeing the young girls again. It was great seeing the parents again. They were coming up and saying, oh, next season and all that. It was good going to Boz's story. But then seeing the people at Horsell and all that, you know, we want to do things like we want to get back into schools and coach the kids we do, we want to turn up the soccer camps we do, next season being full time, we want the players to do the same, yeah. so uh, we'll, we'll get the players to go in the community, we and I will say to them, there's no back door at the football club, we welcome the kids in the change room, we welcome sponsors in the change room, I believe we're having a drink with sponsors next Friday night, around the place a bit, you know, um, obviously social distance that'll be, or well, you can do it outside now we can, so things like that are very important, mm. hopefully next year we'll do family days, we'll do kids days, it's massively important, all the things I've been dying to do at a club, and I was just getting cracking, yeah. you know, and I was just getting into it, I was just trying to say, listen, we're not just a football club, we're a community club, our front is a manager, I've got Ian and Martin Taylor, and Matt, we'll all do the same with the players, when it gets taken away from you, you lose a bit of yourself as well, you know, so uh, we found that difficult. Next year, hopefully, we can go up the bars again, like we've done that time up at, um, what is the bar called again? We stayed there, because I remember I was saying to my wife that uh, my train was late home, but you got a tweet saying, Douse is still at the bar. <laughs> 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 we won't talk about bars first. <laughs> so, um, but, but you know, we can go back and talk to the fans again, saying, come yeah. and meet up at the town centre, come meet with the clubhouse, that's what I want to do. Mm. Good, bad, or ugly. I, I've never turned me back on the supporters, I never will. The supporters have won us games, the supporters got us promotion, in my opinion. The supporters won the game against Wilson that time. We won the game. Well, and you of know. course, with yep. luck, yep. the one further match that supporters will be able to come in yep. will be Wilson. And, and I think you might, you know, whether you've got yep. a word for Mona's Corner, because, you know, they've now got their own badge oh, brilliant. that John Wilson designed. Is that right? Uh, 70 year anniversary of Mona's Corner. And, right. and I'm sure that uh, we are <laughs> to about the fans' encouragement, Mona's Corner will be right, high honest. in your thoughts. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's good crack. Like, at first, it's good, but they do laugh like. You know, so somebody had oh, doubts in your heart, oh yeah, shut up, man, they're all laughing all that, you know, you're going to get that, like, you know, and, uh, that's why it's me and that's going I quite enjoy it, but sometimes when I lose my temper and I shout back at them, I, I can see, thinking 20 of them just got big smiles on the face, <laughs> you know, we've got your little bait there, doubts and all that, but that's what they come, they come support their club, good, bad or ugly, I, I may have had to do, you know, if I don't agree, I'll tell them, uh, but at most of the time we're getting beat, you, you got to take it on the chin, just like you got to, but, you know, uh, clubs in a massive sea of hands now, we're going in a different place now, I believe, and I think everybody's got to be excited. I do understand that it's hard seeing the team not doing so well. All the things we mentioned this morning, I hope, you know, it's just the truth, isn't it? Because sometimes I see it and people say, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's nice to have a different thing in there. I'm sure everybody's looking forward to next season. Come get your season tickets, come get them off me. Great message, Dale. Thanks Thank very much. And, uh, well, I won't be seeing you on... Saturday, Saturday because I can't go to Maidenhead, but I will be seeing you because so I'm going to go up to You're Halifax. Good, Halifax. Yes, okay, I must forward, be though. mad. We'll have a sing-song on the coach, can't we? We'll have a sing-along. <laughs> uh, something like that. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dale. See you now. Cheers.